Um, you are endorsing Dr. Jill Stein. You were a surrogate for Bernie Sanders. You spoke all over the country for him. Yes, yes, yes. What made you decide to support the Green Party presidential candidate as opposed to Hillary Clinton? Well, I've never been tied to one party or one candidate or even one institution. Uh, and that's true even one church as a Christian. I'm committed to truth and justice. And uh, Brother Bernie, no doubt, was, uh, was the standard bear for truth and justice during the, uh, the primary at a national level, at a highly visible level. Once he endorsed Hillary Clinton, who for me is a neoliberal disaster, uh, uh, it was clear— What do you mean by that? A neoliberal disaster is one who generates a mass incarceration regime, who deregulates banks and markets, who uh, promotes— uh, uh, chaos of regime, re regime change in Libya, supports military coups in Honduras, uh, uh, undermines some of the uh, magnificent efforts in, in Haiti of working people and so forth. That's the record of Hillary Clinton. So there was no way when my dear brother, who I love very deeply, Bernie Sanders, said she'll make an outstanding president, I said, oh, I disagree with my brother. I think she'll—I don't think she'll make an outstanding president at all. She's a militarist. She's a hawk. She could take us into war with Russia. She could take us into war with, uh, um, with, with, with Iran. So, I mean, I think she's, she's, uh, she's dangerous in terms of her neoliberal ideology. Not as a woman, because I'm supporting, of course, my dear sister Jill Stein. I think after uh, the magnificent campaign of Bernie Sanders, the next step is the green step. The next step is the progressive step. And when you're calling for reparations, you're calling for the release of prisons, prisoners who are t have been historically uh, uh, unfairly treated, especially tied to uh, uh, nonviolent crimes, and then saying they should vote, and that vote should never be taken away. When you're calling putting people and planet in peace before profits, uh, Sister Jill Stein, for me, is a, uh, somebody that's worth fighting for. And she's not a spoiler. You know, a lot of people use that term, spoiler. If Hillary Clinton can't make the case, to progressives, she doesn't deserve our vote. Now, Trump is a neo-fascist in the making. There's no doubt about that. Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt about that. But the thing is, is that uh, you can't just be a non-Trump a non and deserve one vote. If Hillary Clinton wants to vote a progressive, she better be real about it. But I don't think she has the capacity to be real about it. She's so tied to Wall Street. She's so tied to the corporate elite. Why do you say he's a neo-fascist, Donald Trump? The because neo-fascism in the United States takes the form of big money, big banks, big corporations tied to xenophobic scapegoating of the vulnerable, like Mexicans and Muslims and, uh, uh, and women and black folk, and militaristic policies abroad, with strongman, charismatic, autocratic personality. And that's what Donald Trump is. And we should know, and this is where I salute you, my dear sister, corporate media has played a fundamental role in the making of Donald Trump. Two billion dollars, free time. They made big profits. They put their profits ahead of the public interest. They covered every speech, every word in Twitter for the last 14 months just to make big money, even this convention. Even this convention. They can't wait. They salivating for the profits. And what do they do? They throw out this mediocre, dumbed-down, xenophobic-speaking brother who, I mean, he's a human being like anybody else. So, I mean, you know, he's made an image of God in terms of my own Christian faith and so forth. But he's a neo-fascist in the making, and corporate media is going to have to acknowledge the tremendous responsibility they have of making sure Donald Trump was center stage. If Bernie Sanders had received one half of that kind of attention. We'd be in a very different place if they would put more stress on what Jill Stein is saying. The unbelievable fairness, subtlety of analysis, moral passion of Sister Jill. Corporate media won't touch with a 10-foot pole for the most part, but it's changing. It's going to change. What does Dr. Jill Stein represent? What, why are you drawn to the Green Party platform now that Bernie Sanders has conceded? Well, one, in the language of Coltrane, she's a major force for good, accenting the role of poor and working people being sent to stage. She's green in terms of trying to save the planet in the face of corporate, green, corporate greed. 
She's fundamentally concerned with issues of racial justice, legacies of white supremacy, as well as male supremacy. She's concerned about empowering working people. She opposes TPP, trying to make sure we don't have the corporate reshaping of the world economy, the kind of policies, of course, the Democratic Party has supported, President Obama has supported. Uh, uh, I, it's hard to find somebody at the national level who provides a certain kind of hope given the unbelievable spiritual decline and moral decay. And by spiritual decline and moral decay, I mean greed and indifference and contempt in the driver's seat among our elites vis-a-vis -vis all working people and poor people. It's just sad to see so many fellow working people, working people and fellow citizens supporting a pseudo-populist and neo-fascist like, like Donald Trump. They're in pain. The pain is very real. Um, but they're moving in the right-wing direction. What happened with the Democratic platform? You were one of the people on the committee. A lot of people don't know how this stuff is made, how the sausage is made. Um, explain what happened. What did you win? What did you lose? Well, I was blessed to be put on the committee by uh, Brother Bernie Sanders. We had wonderful deliberations. Brother Elijah Cummings was very fair. He was the chairperson. But we lost TPP. We lost Medicare for all. We lost, of course, Israeli occupation uh, uh, and Israeli settlements included within the platform, keeping track of our precious Palestinian what about brothers them? and sisters. You lost. What do you mean you lost? Them? We lost meant that we made the case and we lost the vote. What were you looking for? We were looking to include them within the platform, so at least it was on paper. Now, of course, putting it on paper is different than putting it in practice. The declaration is different from the execution. But we lost over and over again because the Clinton people lined up and voted against it. That's why I, of course, abstained uh, initially uh, at, at the, um, the move from writing the draft, and then we took it to the platform committee in Orlando. I was also a member of the platform committee, and I had to abstain again, because even though they didn't allow for abstention, it was just no, uh, yes. But uh, I, I, there's no way, based on moral grounds, both based on my own moral conscience, that I could support that platform. And once, once my dear brother moved into his endorsement, his strong endorsement of the neoliberal disaster that Sister Hillary represents, there was no way that I could stay with Bernie Sanders any longer. Mm. You had to break with the two-party system. The dual duopoly has to come to an end. I was hoping we could bring the neoliberal era to a close, because we either go populist, Bernie Sanders, neo-fascist with Trump or neoliberalism limps on with Hillary Clinton. Right now, the Democratic Party, still run by corporations, big lobbyists and so forth, from APAC to a host of other lobbyists uh, with big money. Uh, and it looks like they want to hold on for dear life, and it's a sad thing to see because the country is having a nervous breakdown. And you just hope that um, there can be enough people with compassion and courage to hold on to justice, keep the legacy of Martin. Martin Luther King Jr., and Rabbi Abraham Joshua, Heschel and Edward Zaid, and Dorothy Day alive. Finally, when you look at what Donald Trump is calling for, the wall on the border with Mexico, banning Muslims from coming in, barring Muslims from coming into the country, um, hesitating to disavow the support of the white supremacist David Duke and other issues. Um, for those who say uh, it's only Hillary Clinton who could defeat that, what is your response? My response is that when you actually look at the mass incarceration policies, when you actually look at the reinforcement of the new Jim Crow and the segregation of our educational systems and so forth, that occurred under Democrats. It would, it would persist under Hillary Clinton. What Donald Trump talks about in the abstract has actually been concretely enacted under the neoliberal regimes of the Democratic Party. Same would be true in terms of foreign policy. Foreign policy for me is very, very important in terms of uh, the no-fly zones in Syria that could lead toward war, the kind of uh, uh, encirclement of Russia. I mean, can you imagine Russian troops in Mexico and Canada? What would the U.S. response be? Oh, my God. Well, that's very much what NATO troops are vis-a-vis -vis Russia. Now, we know Russia's run by autocratic Putin. But uh, that kind of provocation for Russia, who has nuclear uh, uh, arms, uh, is the kind of thing that, Cl that Hillary Clinton, of course, supported. And her connection to the Robert Kagans and Henry Kissingers, of course, are just frightening in regard to militaristic orientations. And so this idea that somehow we've got to opt for a neoliberal disaster is the only option vis-a-vis -vis the neo-fascist catastrophe 
as a blues man, I appreciate you playing that blues. I said, uh, I can deal with catastrophe, uh, not by panicking and being driven by fear, but I can look the catastrophe in the face and still tell the truth and still go down swinging with a smile. And most importantly, love, Coltrane's love. And for me, Jesus is love at the center of how we proceed. We're going to leave it there, but we'll be talking to you through the week. Dr. Cornell West, professor at Union Theological Seminary, he endorsed Bernie Sanders uh, for president uh, last summer and was appointed by Sanders to serve on the Democratic Platform Committee, author of a number of books, most recently Black Prophetic Fire, now is endorsing Dr. Jill Stein. Green Party presidential candidate. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we go to Istanbul and stay right here to talk about the attempted coup over the weekend. Stay with us.